Hello everyone, welcome to Juniper's Knot. I want to thank viewer Spectre Von Baron for recommending this game to me. Alright, so here is here's what Juniper's Knot is all about as the site describes it. Juniper's Knot is a short kinetic novel crafted in a month by Dischan. Juniper's Knot is a story told from dual perspectives, that of a demon and a boy. It begins on, a, on an autumn morning in a silent town. Okay, and that's it. And, by the way, a kinetic novel uh, basically means that the novel is a visual novel in the most literal sense of the term. You don't really have any interaction over what happens in the story. It's just, it's literally a visual novel. So, yeah, there's not really going to be any play. It's really just about sitting back and enjoying the story and getting into the uh, the world. And I just want to say, before I even get going, that it's already made a very, very good first impression. It's, I mean, already there's beautiful art, and everything is so good looking. Just look at the way things fade in when you mouse over them, when you click on stuff. All these nice fades and stuff, it just, it's beautiful already. So it's definitely off to a good start. And by the way, this game is running in the RenPy engine, just as Analog Hate Story and Hate Plus, which I played recently, were. So, same engine. Same system. Of course, the major difference between those games and this game's, in terms of mechanics, is that those had actual elements of play in it. This one's a kinetic novel, so it's, again, a visual novel in the most literal sense. But, uh, yeah. Alright, let's get going. You know, I'm starting to really like the RenPy engine. Seems pretty neat. Much of these stone walls and floors have weathered into dirt and dust, revealing the foundation. Much of the ceiling, too, has crumbled to the ground, layering in flecks and bits. Blow me now, below me now is such tired soil. Tired, tired soil. Pah. There isn't much to do here but burn dead leaves and wait. Watch the smoke rise, curl up fresh, and tickle the inside of your nose. Dull as bones, it is. But what can I do? I'm stuck. Some might say cursed. I'd rather say bound. I don't like to think very much about it. I kneel to the small fire I've started taking up a few embers and loam into my palm. It's this glow that stirs me and reminds me that my heart is still beating. I bring the scorched earth close to my face, shut my eyes and breathe it in. I taste it and spit. It's barren. I'm probably going to wait here forever. What? There's an unnatural rustling not far off. West? West, huh? What is it? Who? Another? Here? My eyes sharpen and my ears perk up. I feel my heart thumping into my throat. Should I be forward? Give a call? Would that work? Cry out, plead, help, help, damsel! A fool sort of lie. Would that work? No, go still. Listen. Just listen. Whatever it is, it's right busy about here. Noise is tumbling rough from old doorways. Chests wine open. Shops and homes are explored. A scavenger, then? Someone found this place? Hmm, hearing these sounds is just... odd. It shouldn't be odd, but it is. Strange, I should remember such sounds. Oh? The noise is getting closer, is it? Hold on, let me just take a break for a second. Is this just misspelled, or should I actually be reading it like that? Like, I imagining this? Sh shouldn't that be, am I imagining this? Or is it... Or does she just speak in a strange way, and this is just writing the strange way she speaks out? I'm not really sure. But I don't think I can say I imagining this with a straight face, so I'm gonna kind of, you know, mold stuff. Anyway, back into it. Am I imagining this? No, no, it's surely in the manor now. Poking around the kitchen and lounge... 
I decide, on the chance that it will find its way to the ballroom, to stand. I take a good posture and await this new company. And to my surprise, it, he, shows up at the door within the next minute. A boy? A man? What kind of thing's this again? He's carrying a pack and has a bottle on his waist. Maybe he's a traveler then? Doesn't look like he's noticed me yet. He's just wandered in. Stare adrift. After a few steps, I catch his eye. He moves a little closer to look me in the face. And then some more to see my feet. He stops there. He's staring now and doing nothing more. Come here. As if realizing something, he stiffens. His heart beats loud in the air. I need your help, so come on, come here. He doesn't bend. What is he up to? What does he think this is? I speak again, this time with a little bite. The hell are you waiting for, tit? Oh, oh, have I been rude? Have I been rude? Oh, well, you are cordially invited to move your dumb legs. Also, this is loud as freaking hell, oh my god, hold on. Uh, there we go. For the first conversational words I've spoken in centuries, they could have been worse. He shakes with fear and stands back. A fiend? Slow, are you? What does it matter? What are you pissing your trousers for? Get over here. Ah, no way, you'll eat my soul. A what? A smile cracks along my face. <laughs> your soul! Oh my, oh my, oh my. When was it last that I laughed like this? I grin. I grin so brightly, watching, chuckling while he shrinks back a little, and a little more. <laughs> now, person. Person, you're just perfect. A jester. Won't you lend an ear? Before I eat your soul. Ha! At my laughter, he glares, stealing himself. He answers me. You're not catching me, demon. Got that? I've read the stories. I'm tired, but I ain't stupid. Am I that famous? <laughs> Mercy, I left a mark. You know what I mean. Hell, I really don't. Fiends, devils, demons, all of ya. I know how it is. And how is it? You're all foul and you try to trick people. Trick you? Trick? Tri <laughs> oh. Oh, I really just can't believe it. What's happened in the years I've been gone? And what if I'm not trying to trick you, person? What if I just want to hear you? You just want to hear me? What the hell? Like, what's it you've read, lad? Do tell. I'd love to hear a story. I'm a little bored. I think I'll just leave. You turn tail on a bloodthirsty, wicked fiend. Look, I know something dirty when I see it. You ain't fooling no one. <laughs> He's so precious. All right, all right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you... I... Like all his fiends, devils, demons, and plainly trying to win your extravagant soul through my dastardly wit. Honest and true, I'm a rook. But please, please, at the least, tell me of what you've read. Why the hell do you want to listen to me so much? Because I am bored, and your voice, ah, your voice, I swoon. Ah, horse feathers. I really do want to listen. Would you be so kind? Ah, he's genuinely considerate. Such a delight. I do want to hear him. In the meantime, I look him over a little more finely. He's got a fair face, but through the fabric of his shirt, I can see that he's muscled. A surprise. Even the soldier boys seemed a bit lean back in the days I rode at Marley. I wonder what it is he does. He smells like an animal, in the most pleasant way that can be said. It's quite good. Also, he has the faintest scent of watercress about him, mingled with black oil. What a peculiar, peculiar lad. Huh. Hmm? I'd really better not stick around. I guess I can tell you some things, though. Uh... Yeah, I guess I can tell you. As long as you stay put, you hear? What's keeping me from you is more powerful than I care to challenge, person. Yeah, right, whatever. 
Here's a story, one from a book I read a lot when I was little. <laughs> oh, pardon, pardon. I find it very hard to think of you any littler. Quiet. There was a com there was a cobbler in White Acre who had nothing to eat. He was poorer than dirt, and he didn't have a girl, and it made him real sore. He didn't have a girl? A, a dame, a sweetheart. He didn't have a wife. Ah, continue. While he was walking down an alley, he met this man. He had on a dark cloak with a hood that covered his eyes, and the cobbler couldn't make heads or tails of it. He stopped and asked the cloaked man if he'd like his shoes worked on. The... That's stupid. Why would he do that? Because he needed all the work he could get. Well, he should have gone around, around ruining shoes if what he needed was work. The cloaked man said he wasn't wearing shoes, but he could use a new pair. But obviously the cobbler is a cobbler, so he don't make shoes. He tells him that. And the cloaked man says, actually, I could really use some new shoes. The cobbler looks at him weird and says he can get them if the guy's sick. And the cloaked man says, would you do that? I'd do something for you then. And the, co and the cobbler says, like what? And the cloaked man says, perhaps anything. He leans forward darkly as he says this. I smirk at the action. Now I know what you're thinking. I've heard this one before and know how it goes. Well, you don't. Because the cobbler says, perhaps not. And he walks away. How exciting. But here's the thing. While he's walking, he notices the alleys longer than usual. He doesn't think about it, though. Thinks he's just tired from work and keeps walking. But while he's walking, he sees another man in a cloak. He stops and asks if the man could use his shoes getting worked on, and the cloaked man says he doesn't have any shoes. The cobbler stops and looks at him, and says he'd better get moving. The cloaked man says he could really use some new shoes. And while he's moving, you know. I nod. He keeps running into this man in a cloak, and he can't find the end of the alley. Actually, every time it takes every time it takes longer and longer. Till he sees the man in the cloak. On the eighth time he runs into the man, he stops and asks, what's the game? And the cloaked man looks at him with yellow eyes. Says he could really use some new shoes. For what? The cobbler says. I don't know, the cloaked man says. Perhaps anything. What do you want? The cobbler knows exactly what he wants, but fiends have yellow eyes, and he knows a fiend. <laughs> Nonsense. I actually sighed hearing that. So what you're telling me, if this story is anything good to adhere to, is that I might have already trapped you. Dunno. I don't think you did. Why not? He shrugs. I don't think you did. Hmm. I really must say, your manner, manner of storytelling is queer. What? It's strange. Oh. I don't know, it's just very strange to my ears. I guess. How's your story end? The cobbler gets desperate and makes a pact with the fiend to get new shoes by the next day. The fiend will give him gold for him to do that. So the fiend gives him the gold, but he doesn't make it. The fiend traps him in the alley so he can't leave. His soul is taken, and he's damned. The fiend eats his soul and leaves the alley for a farm. A farm? Yeah, I know. I snort. That's comedy. I think it's supposed to mean something, but eh. Point is, don't get caught up with fiends no matter what. You're getting caught up with a fiend right now. Well, you don't feel right. I what? He shakes his head. Nothing. I look at him and try to figure him out. Figure out his opinions and his story. In the time he's told it, he seems to have taken another idea of me. I'm not sure why that is, either. I appreciate you telling me that story. Don't mention it. So opaque. You're still wary of me? Yeah, a little. I frown. Well. Do you want me to tell you another story? The unsolic unsolicited offer throws me. Is he really asking? 
But no, if I'm too eager, I can't ask for that. No. I pause. No, I'm fine. If you say so. I'm going to go now. Go? Yeah. I have to go, so... I'm going. Ah. He begins to turn around. Stay, please, stay, please. I won't take your soul, honest, I won't. And then like an idiot, I move my hand out, reaching for him with singular wanting. I move past the second meter, past the circle's edge with my fingers, and withdraw with a start as they're set afire. Dropping to my knees, I scream. I cry out and howl, clutching the flames and smothering them. Tears crawl down my face and I snarl with pain. I shut my eyes and moan. I hear him step a bit closer. You're stuck there? Looking up at him from the ground, I feel my teeth chattering. Oh no, I know why I want him to stay. Yes, I know. To rend him. Because as if, as if it wasn't, as if it just wasn't so funny enough that vines, uh, that vines sweat down from the walls and grass is borne through stone so close, just outside this putrid circle. Now there's a human breathing before me. Comedy. Everywhere but here, but near to me, to my desolating blood. These years have damned me, cut and clawed beneath my skin. Scars invisible, but nevertheless, blighting. I hate it. I hate it. Hate it so much. I hate the feeling it gives to my heart, and the strength it takes in kind. I hate it. My flesh heats, and I look away from him. Looking into his eyes enrages me. How long have you been in it? How long have you been there? Long enough to beg. Long enough, you hear. Too long I've been in this stinking pile. It doesn't matter to you. I want to know. Well, I don't want to tell, huh? Eh, sorry, miss. Miss? I take a look at my clicking, stuttering hand. My sight still blurred with tears. It's sizzling. Small blazes dance between the fingers. I take my tongue to it, soothing the burns. You're a bold one, huh? Calling me a flap? A uh, wh- huh? No, no, you're- you're no flapper, lady. It means something different now? Miss is just what you're supposed to call older ladies, out of respect. Lapping the flames from the back of my hand, I glance at him. That right? Are you okay? I suck my ring finger and squint. What's that? All right, fine. Is that okay? All right? Hmm, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a fiend, yes. Heal fast. Hold on, I'll be right back. Sorry about that sudden interruption. Okay, back to the game. Though I can still feel it snap and pop in the joints. I, I whistle cool air through my digits and take myself from the ground. Are you going to stay? I... I could. Ah. Oh. Thank you. I'm actually lost right now. Ah, lost is it? Lost. <laughs> That's a sweet irony. Don't look so addled, person. The irony is quite obvious here, isn't it? He squints. Think. After all, I cannot even be lost. Forever and ever, I'll know where I am. And where I am is... Stuck. I laugh again, but he doesn't find it funny. He doesn't seem to find it much of anything at all. I quit it, wiping away a figurative tear. <laughs> oh, oh, I know this place so intimately, it'll redden your face. He jerks and gives gives his head a shake. I, if you... Hmm? Ah, uh, if you know where this is, do you know where's more? Ah, 
so earnest. I don't know what more is. I know mores. Mores? I? Mores? Mores you follow? I don't know what those are. My, my, ain't this a right dizzy jig we're dancing? Time's making fools of us both. <laughs> his looks a bit hazy, as though he's having a hard time keeping his eyes fresh. I turn my head, silently. What's more, person? Where I was born. Live. A town? A new town? City. Think it's been there for a while. That's right. He doesn't speak, and I glance over just quickly enough to catch him at the end of nodding. Did you know? This place was a moor for a time. Miss, I don't know what... What is that? It is a dead place. A wet place. I, too, was born in a moor. Can't your stomach read a mood? Bleeding hell, I was about to tell a tale. Sorry. You're hungry, is it? Starvin'. Us fiends here, we only eat souls, and only for pleasure. Quit joking. Joking. Hey, you got any food? What are you blathering on about now? I look like I got food? I don't got any food, idiot. However, here. I thrust out my hand just before the barrier palm just before the barrier palms up. Give me the chestnuts in your pack. I smell them. He hesitates. Why? So I can gobble them up. What do you think? I'll cook them for you. They're not long from the branch or the ground, smells like. You haven't cooked them, and nor have you eaten them. You prefer the taste of them cooked? He nods, slowly. I twitch my fingers, waiting. Is there something you want, uh, for this? Your company for the morning, till noon. That's it? I nod. Okay, deal. What, what the hell is that color shift that just happened? What was that? His words spoken like a knell, it resonates deeply, echoing, and shakes ash from the walls. Startled, the boy covers his mouth. Deal, was it? Hmm. I smile. Here. Did I just... I, you made a pact. Hmm. Shaking his head, he sighs. Wordlessly, carefully, he takes off his pack and opens it up. Withdrawing a bushel of nuts in two hands, he moves forwards. I look down at him, still waiting. And with steady movements, he brings his hand, hands to mine. He holds my gaze, and I don't move at all. But I do think. I think, wait, couldn't I just... Couldn't I just... You know. Quickly just... My hands tense, but it ends with a thought. He drops the heap into my palms. My fingers curl around it. Again, I turn up my lips. Seeing this, he hops back. Give me a moment. I take all but one into my left hand, holding the last between my right thumb and forefinger. Opening my mouth, I bring it between my teeth and puncture it with one of my fangs. I bite through the shell, making a rough cut from one end to the other, and take it out. Observing the inner flesh of it, I spit out the shreds. Satisfied, I go on to carve the second, third, fourth, and so on. When I finished, I held the chestnuts aloft and make a hearth of my hand. This will take a while, person. But not so long. Might we talk some? Uh, sure. Then have a seat. Where did we leave off before your stomach so rudely interrupted? He sits, chin on his, chin on his knees and eyes half-lidded. More something? Ah, yes. 
I'll tell you a story about Moors in return for yours. Though rather than a story, a chat would be nice, huh? Save you, uh, save you a story for a bit later. What do you want to talk about? Moors. Oh, right. My moor, uh, mine. There really isn't much to say, come to think of it. You said you were born here? Or born there? Yeah, like all fiends, I was born in waste. You've read about us, huh? About how we make barren anywhere we stand, unconsciously drain life from Earth for our sustenance? Hmm. Hmm. Fallid land in collegianous loft, air crawling low and damp with miasma. The pith of plants choked, sterile. I feel my face twisting to a scowl. Sounds, uh... It sounds hideous. I know, because it is. Did you grow up there? <laughs> a neat question. Yeah, yeah I did. Had a mother and a father. Always got me wondering. Is this where I'll be when I get old? A bloody moor? <laughs> Guess not. You left it, then. Left it for many places. What was it like growing up there? Tedious. And maybe I shouldn't... Uh, maybe I shouldn't have brought this up at all, huh? You just don't want to talk about it. That's okay. No, no, it's not a matter of okay. There's just not much of anything to talk about. It's all very colorless. What about yours? My what? Your more. Oh. It's not really anything special, just your typical city. Typical to me is not the same to you. Well, it's big. Loud. Streets are packed with folks. Lots of smoke and brick. My mom and pop run a farm near there, because they're crazy. Oh, is that where your scent's from? My, my scent? You smell like herbs and horses. It's quite adorable. You also smell like black oil, but I'm not sure where from. City's pretty modern. I have to lift canisters of oil from place to place every Wednesday. Oh, tough. He nods. <laughs> Very tough. Hey, knock it off, will ya? I do hard work. He kind of slurs his sentence, but is nevertheless determined to appear strong. I believe you. For your noble, strong efforts, I think it's time for your story. You ready? He shrugs. I clear my throat and loosen up my shoulders somewhat, poising my fire hand dramatically. Hmm. Did you know that stars sometimes act as rain in the night sky? You mean like a meteor shower? Hush. I've heard of it, but never seen it. Well, I've heard of it and know it because I've seen it. Imagine this. Thousands. Thousands of lights. And they all bleed along the cold... Carulean... What the heck is that? Carulean mare? I, I don't know. Above, slowly. Very slowly. Follow? They're so very slow that as they make the long stretch out above you, you hardly notice their drag. It is an impeccable slowness. Imagine it. He nods, very slowly, and nods in another way, drifting into my memory. And flash! I flare the fire in my hand, the chestnuts wax, splitting, crackling. He jumps, the light catching in his eyes. Flash! <laughs> flash, flash! Which, which, with each of these words, I stoke the flames. They lick up and dance wildly. Each single brilliant streak cuts through the lights, independent and free. And then, it dies. The magic in my palm fades and sighs. It pulses, fades, pulses, fades. His eyes glaze over. Like this. Like a heart's last beating. Death is quick to these stars. Straying my eyes from the light. 
Had they so turned, I hadn't noticed. I gaze upon the boy. Say, person, that sorrowful to you? Huh? He thinks of an answer. It is. There isn't a right answer, person. You don't have to consider it like there is one. You think it's sorrowful? I do. That's interesting. Truly interesting. I end the fire, leaving the chestnuts to cool. I blow on them and breathe on them, ears twitching. These are done now. I hold them out to him. My end of the bargain's met, and you know what? I'll do you a favor. I'll go ahead and roast the rest of your chestnuts in my fire, here. I motion to the dead leaves. I'll do this, I'll do this for free, for no deal. All that's left now? All, that, all that's left now is for you to stay. Squinting, he waits a little, but soon enough crawls forward on his hands and calves, his pack in tow. He stops at the edge of the circle and takes the fruits from my hand. He looks at me, wearing a kind of ugly expression. What? Settling onto his rear, he keeps looking at me, but a bit less ugly. He seems to be wondering something. Eventually, he looks at the nuts in his hand instead, his face softening. He shells one and pops it into his mouth. His face flushes naturally. He chews a little. He pushes his pack into the circle with his foot, shifts back a few feet, and speaks. Which part of that was the story, miss? Well, look at that. You aren't entirely daft. I take up the bag from the ground, shake it a little. It doesn't smell like there's anything more than chestnuts in here. I open it up and check, sure enough, finding the things in excess. Some with the burrs still on, some still green. I toss those ones. I still rummage through it, just in case there might be something of interest. There's not. Twas a preamble, twas. There's a story to it for certs. I told you I've seen this. Blinking, he nods. With a hollow sound, I crack one of the chestnuts apart in my mouth. I grow the fire at my feet and drop it in there. No more flashy tricks now. As I reiterate these actions, I speak to the boy. I was not alone with those stars then. I was with another, Miss. And dropping another into the fire, I watch its fall. My eyes lose some of their color. She was fair, young, and human. A perfect miss. Just a charming girl. We would dance together and sing, press close when unseen. <sighs> I was fascinated with her, I think. And so, when she'd gotten melancholy, I brought her from town and to those stars. I had the ache in my knees, knew the Eventide would be crying, and had figured the beauty of it would settle her. The boy constricts his brow, chewing somewhat sadly. Oh, not to worry, not to worry, it did, it did. He swallows. I've never understood the custom of man. I've always been free-thinking and never bound to the thoughts of others. My actions that night, no, my actions altogether, none took kindly to it when she returned. What happened? What happened? What? Well, after I took her back to town, she was plowed and beaten and beaten and beaten and plowed and beaten and beaten until she could not move or breathe. Uh, what? This took a dark turn. <sighs> the boy stares and not his hand held stiff only so near to his parted lips. I buried her under the sky where I last saw her smiling. What the fuck? I, I, I don't even know how to react to that. He closes his mouth into a frown. A century later, I returned to her spot and found an olive tree grown there. 
It was the sickest thing. Gnarled and twisted it was. Furious, I raised the entire plant. Its trunk, its bark, its branches and leaves. I scorched its roots. Would have torn out the roots. Though refrained to not disturb her. Yet last I'd seen, it remained. Alive, born fruit, and uglier than before. Isn't that the most wonderful story one can tell? I... What? Wonder what the fuck? Wonderful? Was... What is happening? Now I just feel sick to my stomach. No. <laughs> I dropped the last of the chestnuts into the leaves. Didn't you mess up the guys who did it? Mess up? You're a fiend. You didn't eat them? I didn't eat them. What happened to them doesn't matter to the story. I want to know. I don't want to tell. Oh, seriously, miss? You know, when kids in the neighborhood mess with my kid's brother, brothers, I beat their faces in with a stick. And that's what love is. It's taking care of what... It's taking care of your mates. Love? That's what you figure from this tale? That I fancied her? Well, obviously. It's my story, person, not yours. Come off it. It is an old story, and it is only a story. Stop. What? Man? He chucks the shell in, shell, ugh. He chucks the shell in his hand against the wall at his side, his expression sour. Fine. I was just entertaining you as I cooked. Well, I think the boy's reaction mirrors mine quite a bit. I, 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 what? I just... This has taken a far darker turn than I thought it would. And her attitude towards that is very bizarre. Huh. That's stupid. Bollocks. I don't want to hear that from your fool ass. Well, it's stupid. It's stupid. Forget it. What? What's this? You starting? Your stone's dropping now? Drop them any further, I'll tear them out. Tear out your tongue, too, here? Don't start with me. The boy freezes, hand hovering, hovering over his last chestnut. I'll rip your legs off, understand? Don't start with me. Last thing you need to be worrying over is your soul. Since I'll rend you limbless if you start with me. And there won't be anything to be holding that soul at all. You start with me, I'll kill you. We clear, person? He quickly nods. I chuckle. You're a cute thing, aren't you? Quailing so tender, I can't move from here, person. You know that. Quivering, he speaks up. It, it just sounded pretty real. Did it? The boy lets out a loud sigh, shaking, it, uh, shaking as it leaves him. Still vibrating from fear, he fumbles, opening his last nut. There looks to still be bits of shell on the fruit, which he does not notice until it's in his mouth. He frowns a bitter frown and calms down somewhat, now distracted by the taste. Some of these are finished, mind. I nod at the fire. Can toss them to you, if you'd like. If you're still scared... N nah, I'm not. He rocks his head. I'm fine. But I'm pretty tired. Could you toss them anyway? Yeah, yeah, surely could. Also shall, but only if you agree to stay with me till sunset. It's noon already? It is. I sit down myself, lounging across from him. He stares, his vision slowing and jumping and trying to focus. Eventually he squints, leveling his eye on me. Ed, didn't you say you'd do it for free? Not this person. I said I'd cook these, and I am. He furrows his brow and frowns. Fine, I'll stay with you. 
Deal. <laughs> there's, there's another deal locked in. The ballroom rattles with the sound. He isn't surprised by it. I smile again. So is that what you are? Tired? He, yeah. I pick up a chestnut and throw it at him. He catches it somewhat dazedly. How long have you been gone from your moor, person? I don't know. Two days? I throw him another. Oh, isn't that a long time? No. It's a joke. Laugh. I don't want... If I'd laugh, it'd basically be my... It'd basically be like me laughing at you. <laughs> Answering with a greater joke instead of simply laughing. You really are a jester. A greater joke? I send one more his way. My existence. My predicament and existence, together, are the greatest joke in all history. I know this and I've missed half of it. Stop. Such a soft lad. I tilt my head and regard him. I keep leafing through my head book for the memory of another like you, but I'm finding nothing. And I have so many memories, did you know? So many. So many travels, delights, regrets. A boy shouldn't be so soft. The world's so rough it'll shape him ugly. Languidly breathing, the boy eases into his arms a little more. Or it was. It was a rough place. If you don't know mores, maybe this world's also soft now. It'd explain you. He blinks. Where I was raised, in my moor, that was quite rough. You know why I'd laughed earlier when you mentioned souls? You know why I joke of souls? He blinks. So many of us fiends are so obsessive over souls. It's just extraordinary souls, not unremarkable ones like the way yours feels. Have to look for those mature, spirited humans, their souls heavy with character and experience. He closes his eyes. A newborn soul, for example, won't do anything for you. It is special, though. Yes. A newborn soul is quite pure. Quite pure, really. His back rises and falls. I, I, I couldn't even begin to pronounce that. Exquisite. I chuck a chestnut at his hair. It bounces off and to the ground. He doesn't even flinch. I look into the fire. I gaze into the fire. The fire. These stupid things inside it. Piss. These stupid things. For a flash of a moment, I consider turning them to ash. But doing so would break my pact. No, it wouldn't. I still won't. I would rather burn this... thing. This boy. Blasted. I should have grabbed him while he was at the edge. Wouldn't it have been so simple? Or do I need his agreement to exchange his life for mine from the circle? Am I forgetting? Am I forgetting the conditions? This boy be damned for rekindling hopes in me. Pressing my hands into my face, angry, roughly, I glare at him through parted fingers. I breathe out. If I could just lunge out from here and take him, I'd do it. I would. I growl. My body still feels the sensation of when I last forced myself through the barrier. The searing into my marrow, the purging of my eyes. And I still would. I'd still lunge out from here. I'd bloody well do it thrice to get out of this blighted circle. Why didn't I grab him before? He was at the edge. Why didn't you pull him in? Take him! I've forgotten so much. Oh god, god. To cry to heaven, I... What? Is this what I was like? Having passions? I want to die. I wanted to leave, but not anymore. If this is passion... Passion? Passio? Passio? I want to die. I'd bite my tongue again, burst blood and drown in myself, nails in my wrists, tearing and dig and tug and pull out my bleeding throat again to... Ah. Widening silence every day. Ah. What's a day? 
Two days, he said. What are days, huh? What are months? What are years? I've been here centuries. Centuries? Centuries? Was it longer? Did even centuries... Oh. Quiet settles in, and the wind dashes the leaves. Scraping leaves, scraping leaves, scrape, howl, raindrops falling again, 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 embers in my hand, smoke. Sometimes I scream just to hear a voice again. What happened to my life? My jaw is quaking, my eyes are warm. I wish you hadn't come here. Taking my hands from my face, I look at this peaceful, peaceful, he's so peaceful, isn't he? Peaceful little cunt. Wake up! I throw another chestnut at him, missing. Wake up! Another and another. See me, Kerr? See me, this body? It does not grant the bloody peace of sleep. I take up a handful and toss them. I haven't slept a minute, bastard son of a slut bitch two-pence whore. I haven't slept a second. I have been always awake. Two days? You miserable wretch. Had I only been here two days, I'd drink a pub dry. Damn you, you hear? When you're dead, I'll find and spit on your grave. I'll plant an olive tree there, you rat bastard. I throw and throw and throw. Missing, missing, missing. I hate you! I hate... Am I sobbing now? A fiend? Sobbing? <sighs> Why? I drop my arms to the ground, crying in shakes. For the life of me, I can't remember a time ever crying. Hmm. I'm feeling dizzy. I always feel dizzy when I'm waking up. My mouth's dry, too. It's pretty awful. I smack my lips and rub my eyes. I'm still kind of tired. Uh, why was I tired? M oh yeah. Got lost along the way to the Dales. Told Ma I didn't need that horse. He's so dumb. It would have been better just walking alone. Spooked by a dang partridge. Seriously, he must have bolted about half a mile before bucking me off. I open my eyes, and it looks like fog. I rub them again and notice that that lady from before sitting in front of me. Is she asleep? Miss, you asleep? No. Oh. I just figured since her eyes were closed and all. I can't sleep. I look at her weird and flinch. Something rolled out of my hair. It drops on the ground. Looks like a shell? Oh, it's one of the chestnuts. Why are these in my hair? I ruffle up the top of my skull, finding two more nuts and a burr. Whoa, did she throw these at me? I look at her and arch an eyebrow. Her cheeks are wet, her nose is red, and her ears are low. She looks like one of my kid brothers after falling off a curb. I can't really think of what to tell her. Maybe I'll just say what I always say. Did you do something bad? Tell me the truth. Piss off. Yikes. She's in that mood again. Uh, listen. If you got mad because I... What'd I just say? She says it like a fact instead of a question. I freeze up. Piss off. What'd I do? I thought I was being nice. You want me out of here? She keeps staring at the floor. I'm a little scared now. What time is it? It doesn't look like sunset. It's not sundown yet. I don't think I can... Leave. But the di deal... Leave. If I mess up the... Leave. What am I supposed to do? I don't want to leave. If I mess up a deal with a fiend, I'm going to hell. Or is it worse? 
Oh man, if it's worse. I can't just walk out. Maybe if she... You're kidding. Whoops, didn't want to say that. Good it was quiet. See, my eyes are shaking, looking at her leaf pile. Because there aren't any chestnuts in it. The deal was, she had to toss the chestnuts to me, and she did that. Sort of. I'm out of luck here. I can't leave, lady. Is lady now? Sorry, God. Leave. I want you to be leaving. Walking out of here, go and be damned, villain. I just look at her. I'm biting my teeth together, and my heart's going wild. Burden hell, dog. It's where you belong with all the blasted foul creatures of your ilk. Calm the hell down. She picks up her head from her arms and glares at me. Just calm down, alright? Calm down already. You really are an idiot. Well, well, you're crazy. Why the heck are you mad at me? Why'd you even talk to me, lady? What do you want? You're lonely, right? That's it, right? She starts standing up. Well, I'm not going to let her look that far down on me. I'm standing up, too. I'll even step up to her. I ain't letting her get the better of me. I ain't got no problem scrapping with you, lady. I'll knock your block off. You just swore against my family, and I ain't gonna stand for that, alright? Of course, I'm quaking in my boots while I say this. No, I swore against your race. I gulp and frown. Your entire miserable, sin-hearted race. Know what I'd do if I got out of this circle? She steps forward. I step back. Yes or no? No. She leans forward just before what I'd guess is the barrier. I can feel her breathing on my face. It's cold and warm. Kill the whole lot of them. Kill the men, kill the women, kill the babies, lasses, and lads, like you. To lads like you, I'll dive my hands into their guts, wrench out their innards string by string, and set them on fire. I... I... I'm crying a little. I'm sorry, okay? I don't know what happened to you. I just wanted to know and be nice and... She leans back, standing up straight, and breathes out. I swear I see flames coming out of her mouth. Airy. Are you scared? I nod, fast. Why? I... I don't... I can't touch you, see? All of a sudden, she pushes, pushes her hand towards my face. My eyes widen, my whole body locks up. What am I seeing? I am trapped before here. Her skin's burning off in a bright yellow glow. I can see her muscles, charred black, turning inside out. Fires blazing all over her hand. There's white in there. Her bones. I can't watch. Watch. I turn back from turning away. Your blood's evaporating. She grimaces and tears fill up at the sides of her eyes. One drops, rolling down her cheek, and her hand shoots back to her like it's spring-loaded. I can't leave. Understand? Do you follow, sod for brains? She holds up the twisty stump sticking to her wrist. This, right here, this is what I've known too long. Her hand starts coming back together, the melted parts splitting and the bones getting covered back up. And there's this popping noise with everything. I go green in the face. I can't kill your people. I want to, but I won't be able to leave here. Follow? What? Why are you trapped here? Would you believe me if I said it was a punishment? If I said it was an accident? An unjust imprisonment? Whatever I say, whatever you believe, it doesn't matter. I was trapped here before the world even had a concept of your more. I was trapped here long, 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 long ago, and so, for reasons that no longer matter. I... I don't think you're speaking honest with me. How's that? Told you before, you need to calm the hell down. How? I swallow, hold my fists tight. 
How do I get you out of here? She can't believe what I'm saying. Uh, me neither. But I'm still going to say it. She shakes her head. You've lost it. I shake my head. Nah, I still got it. I know what I just asked you. Tell me, tell me how to get you out of here. If you haven't lost it, you never had it in the first place. I suspected as much. You're touched, aren't you? Look, I got no idea what you're saying, but I'm still thinking straight. And dropping your G's. Shut your trap already. Hush and listen, you rude little pest. I shut my trap. You even know what you're saying? Remember who, what you're talking to. I just think that... I didn't just mess them up. Huh? I did not just mess up the men who raped her. I bore my nails hot into their eyes and tore off their faces. What? And that's not all that I did. When I first saw her lying there, body warm only from the bodies of others, and eyes with no sparks in them, I set the den where she died to flame. I came upon all who lived in her town and murdered them. I, t I torched their homes and pulled the ribs from their chests. Crushed their heads. Snapped their bones. Stripped off their flesh. If I could torment them, I did it. And in case you're wondering, you're all the same to me. I killed all kinds of you. One kind. Human. Sex. Age. I didn't pay any mind when I slew them. Holy shit. Soon they gathered at the center of the town where I'd first caught sight of her, as if to mock me. So I melted them all to the earth, slowly. On the night that she died, I eased, I erased that town from records. All my fighting spirits gone. Why'd you tell me that? You asked. I didn't want... You didn't have to tell me all the... the whole story. You're right, I didn't. But didn't you want to know? What the hell is wrong with you? I'm a fiend. Holy, no, that's bull. Is that why you got put here? No. Really? Yes. Holy shit. I've done many things in my life. Things some find admirable, and others some find despicable. I've put a curse on a family for all their generations. Saved a gaggle of slaves from the tyranny of their fellow man. I've ruined a marriage and I've restored another. Slaughtered a town and rescued a child. I've done so many things. And of all those I've mentioned, not a one of them is the reason I'm here. You forgot? Oh no, I remember it quite clearly. But as I said, the reason no longer matters. I just don't get it. You wanted me to save you, right? I swore that's what you wanted. But now you're telling me all these mixed up things, and what the heck am I supposed to think? What the heck do you want? You gone. I breathe out through my nose and close my eyes. Nah, nah, there's no way. I shake my head again. You've got to be lying to me. I don't think I'll complicate it, sure, but I know when someone's lying to me. Why the heck are you lying to me? I know you don't want me to leave. What happened to you? I look at her eyes. How long have you been in there? I don't know. I don't know anymore. You don't know? That's what I said. What the hell's up with that? That can't be right. All fiends got this knack for knowing the hour exactly. The second, it's famous. So, what the hell does it, it mean if they lose it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey. How much did you love that girl? I... I hear something click in her throat. She doesn't look like she wants to say. Shut up. I... I feel bad for her. This is goddamn weird, but it's like... 
She's so sad. Everything about this lady's sad. I mean it. She's just damn miserable and pathetic. She's so... You really don't know how long you've been in there? Yes. I think you've been in there for long enough. I don't think you really want to kill anyone. Then you're a fool. Quiet. I've had enough of that joke. Tell me how to save you. I reach out to her and grab her hand. The hand that got screwed up and's healed now. I hold on to it. Come on. She stares at me. She looks at my hand, holds it with both of hers, and squeezes. She locks her eyes with me. I need to be switched with another life. That's the only way for me to leave. I put on my manliest face. I'm not going to switch with you. Listen. I keep her from saying anything else. I'm going to find another way, alright? What the hell could you do? I'll plant something in your place. Nothing can grow here. I'm a fiend. That... Ah, damn. Right. How am I gonna... I shake my head. It doesn't matter, that. Land's gonna be fine once you're out, right? At least that's what I think. That's what I've read. Look, you've just gotta believe in me. I look up and finally notice that the sun is gone. You don't want me to leave anymore. I can feel that. She's really holding on tight. But believe in me, let me go and I'll save you. She looks at our hands again. And she cuts into mine with her nail. Ow! I wince. Dang, now, come on, don't do this. I look at her face. She's still staring at my hand. Let me go. Come on. She wouldn't. Right? Don't. Don't pull me. Stop pulling me. I'm trying to calm down my heart. I'm trying not to lose it. But it's hard when she's bringing my arm a little closer and a little bit more. Come on, come on, please. Trust me. She digs her nails into me again. Damn. Ow, ow. Ah. Please, please let me go. Please, come on. Let me go. Let me go. I whisper that, not thinking about it. My eyes are shut. I'm piss scared. I don't want to get stuck in there. I can feel her looking at me, and I breathe faster. I'm trying to be calm. I can feel my lips moving, pleading. And after a while, real slow, she does it. I open my eyes, shocked. She's let go of my hand. And is holding hers up now, where mine was. And she's about to drop it. I toughen up and grab it up again. We make eye contact. Believe in me. Got it? She doesn't say anything. I let go of her hand and pick up my satchel from inside her space. We hold a look. I beg you, don't betray me. Please. I won't betray you. I promise. The walls don't shake. My voice don't boom. I take a step back, and another one. And I run out of there. It's cold now. I'm actually shivering. The moon's high. The grass is glowing. It's dark, but beautiful. It's quiet, like before. Like always, right? It's just wind and dead leaves. Even animals don't walk through this place. I wonder how long it's been since people did. At least this is probably the first time someone's walked through here with a sapling in their hand. 
I step into the big room and look out ahead. Rub my thumb over a branch of the tree I'm carrying. I can see her there on the floor, her hands over her face. I know she can hear me, since whenever I move even a little, her ears flick up. I walk forward. Wipe her nose with the back of her hand. She stands up and breathes out loudly. She opens her eyes and I'm kind of surprised when I see them glowing. I stop at the edge of the barrier. She looks at me. You look a mess. Yeah, well... My belly growls and I sniff. It's pretty hard to dig out a tree properly with no real tools, especially one like this. We both check out the sapling. Isn't that... Uh, yep. An olive sapling. Sapling. I didn't pick it since I wanted to make fun of you. Olive trees are strong. If, there, if there's anything that's going to take root in dirt like this, it's an olive. Right. Step back. I'm coming in. She does that after a second or two, and I walk into her place. Bending down, I hold, the, I hold the olive up to her. Take it. She does that too, after thinking about it. I take a sharp rock out of my pocket that I picked up outside and stab into the ground with it. Cracking the floor. It sticks pretty bad in there, but I can still yank it out. I do that, and keep breaking up the earth. I can feel the lady staring, and I know what she's thinking. Even if, I can, even if I'm a kid, I can still see the soils pretty bad. My eyes as good as Ma's, at least. And this lady definitely knows as good as me, uh, as good as me, how it is for growing. If anything grows, it'll be with awful chances. Seriously, an olive's about the only thing around that might. Making matters worse, I ain't got very long before the sapling's as good as dead. The roots are good and all, but it's not. And honestly, I don't know the difference from a good sapling to a bad one. I sort of just went with my gut. So knowing most of that, she's probably thinking of just walking out. That's what's gotta happen, right? Two living things get in, only one gets out. But I'm not going to check on her and see if she leaves. It's not that I'm trusting her. I can't trust her, but... This is about all I can think of, getting her out without leaving me in, I mean. If I look at her, if I show her that I'm worried, that mess everything up. So I've got to keep at it. I've got to break up this spot. I stab and I pull and I dig, clearing out stones and dirt. I pile all the dirt up next to me. Gonna need it later, bad as it is. After a lot of effort, I lean back and look at the hole I made. Then slow, I turn to see if she's still there. And she is. I hold up my hand. She gives me the olive. I take it and open up my satchel, filled with wet, healthy soil I gathered while I was gone. I carefully transplant the sapling, putting some good soil over its roots and filling the hole back up with a proper mix of my collected stuff and the dirt from the foundation. Careful now. Careful with the roots. Okay. This should be good. I take my canteen from the clip at my waist and open it up. And this is filled with spring water. It took a while to find that. Honestly, it took me a while to do everything. I kind of feel bad about it, but I moved as fast as I could. Anyway, there should be enough here for a healthy first watering. Won't drown it. I pour the insides of the bottle over the leaves and plot, screwing it closed when I'm done and putting it back on my waist. That's it. That's it. That's all? I stand up, wiping sweat away from my brow. Yeah. We both look outside the circle for a while. I give her a look from my side. She's still looking out. Breathe. Okay. Step forward. She doesn't move. I leave her side and turn around. We both stare at the olive tree. Did it work? I open my mouth to ask, but it closes again when I see her. 
She's scared. She's at the edge of the barrier and scared. Oh man, I just realized. If just touching the barrier hurt her so much, how did it feel when she pushed her whole hand through? She had a stone face when she did it, but God. I can't say anything to that. I don't know what that feels like. Man. Seeing her like that, shaking with fear and panicking, just thinking about moving ahead, I can feel my eyes welling up. I just try not to cry, for her. She loosens up her shoulders and puts her hands over her chest. With her eyes closed, she jerks forward. What? Wait! Her foot passes over the line. My hand is up in the air. I wanted to stop her. I didn't want to see that pain anymore. She jerks her other foot forward, completely leaving the spot. It... She steps again, faltering. Again and again. She walks to me. She, she lowers herself and... Just... Embraces me. I wrap my arms around her. Her skin warms up all over and she nuzzles her face affectionately into my neck. Rubs her nose over my cheek. She just eases into me, weak. I bring up one of my hands and pet her head. I'm crying. It's okay, now. I choke. It's okay, right? She just rests on me, taking it away any of the nipping cold in my body. She breathes out past my ear. Thank you. I hug her a little closer. I'm sorry. I shake my head, trying not to break down. Can I just stay like this for a little bit? You're familiar. You're strong. Yeah, yeah, you can... She brushes her nose on me again, whispering something. I can't hear what it is. She holds me tightly, and we don't say anything else. You're a surprisingly emotional lad. Are all lads like that now? It, it just really hurt looking at you, that's all. Right, right. I'm sure that it did, really. I was quite emotional myself. If Mother saw me like that... <laughs> I wonder if Mother's still alive. When did I last see this place from here? Has it really been forgotten? Yeah, I'd never heard of it. That's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. What was it like here? Did you like it? It was normal. Extraordinarily normal. So normal, in fact, that I had to file down my horns just to get around. What about your ears? My ears? What about them? You didn't have to hide them? No, I didn't have to. I only look fiendish with just my ears, like an unfortunate halfling. It little bothered anyone before. If it did, it, I'd just grow my hair long. I Wait, I'd grow my hair long. Yeah, whoops, I keep, I keep misreading a lot of stuff, sorry. Huh. As I was saying, this town, this town, I might have liked it once. Though when I first came here, I never would have expected the stay. Ah, yes. The boy was a lost, wasn't he? You have any idea how to get back to your home? Uh, obviously not. Don't get smart. I'll help you there. Really? I can't assure you when we will find it, but I'll assure... But I'll assure that we shall for certs. I'll take you there. I may as well. You're not going to go travel? I chuckle. This should be enough of a journey after standing so long. Hmm. We'll camp by the eastward spring for tonight. 
You know of the one east? It's still there? Yep. At least it's probably the same one I'm thinking of. Can you fish at all? Not without a rod, no. Then I'll fish for you, but you'll have to, you'll have to prepare it. Can't do everything for you. Hmm. What time is it? You ask me the time. Sorry, just so out of it. Since I leaned on you earlier, you can lay on me while you sleep. I'll keep you warm. He glances at me briefly and looks pensive. He shuts his eyes. I'll do that. He opens them again, keeping their stare from me. Thank you. I smirk at him. Hmm. What? Should I even think? I thought this wouldn't happen. Huh? Am I actually asleep? Dreaming? If you are, that'd be weird for me. I'm glad you stayed. I laugh. I'm glad you're a fool. Hmm. Really, I am. I can't say it enough. It's all right. Don't consort with any fiends other than me. Got it. I honestly feel like this isn't real. But I know that it is. Let's go, then. My mind has become so lucid since I've been freed. Bright. So bright that it nearly blinds me. But I can tell. Yeah. I'm happy. The sun shines a different way now. Different from all the ways I've seen it before. I thought I'd seen them all, but this one's different. Much more different. Pleasant. Watching it come up this morning with him resting on my chest was profoundly serene. Having him calmly there through the moonlight made it better than any other time. And now, a moor brimming with life. That's where I'm going, to guide him, free of charge. And after that, who can say? The world has changed, yeah, greatly changed. It doesn't feel at all the same. My friends have died, I can tell that from the air. Dead and I could not wish them farewell. My kin, too, are dead. On this path, breathing fresh from the winds, I can feel these things and new things. Though fiends still roam, I know no one alive. No one. But this boy here. I think that by him being here, there is company. I want to keep with him. If only ever from afar. I want for his life to go well. And as for mine, when he's gone, I think that I'll go too. Perhaps it's not the best use of the time he returned to me. But I am tired. Tired. But I can stay awake a little longer. Damn, that was good. Wow. I didn't... I didn't expect to be so emotionally caught up in it. I didn't... I mean, like, I didn't... I, I thought it would be good, and it was even better than good, but... At the end there, when she got out of the circle... I really didn't expect to be so emotionally affected by it. But as soon as she did, I started crying. Wow. Okay, well, I just want to mention that... <laughs> what the hell is going on in that image? <laughs> uh, it must be some, like, concept artwork and stuff. Thanks for reading. Well, thanks for making the game. That was exceptional.
You know, I think, uh, yeah, now this extras has opened up. Alright, before I keep talking about it, let's check out the extras. Illustrations, guest art, concept art, jukebox, and credits. Oh, wow. Oh, so you just look at all the frames without anything over it, right? Wow. This is really cool. Yeah, this game has... It has such good art. Ridiculously good. It is beautiful. This illustrations. Let's take, a, let's take a look at guest art. Okay, so yeah, that was the stuff that we saw. <laughs> that was that one. That is weird. Man, this is some really good art. I mean, Jesus. It's so high quality. Concept art. Very cool. And Jukebox, I'm sure that just plays the music, right? Yeah, it's got to be all the music that was in the game, which was also excellent, along with the art. Okay, so yeah, to talk about the game. Damn, that was good. That was really, really, really good. I did not expect at all to be so emotionally invested in a story in, like... What did it take me, like an hour, 20 minutes or so? Maybe, maybe more, I think less than that, like somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half is what it took me to finish. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't with the game for very long. And there's very little interaction because it's a kinetic novel, so you're not really, you know, you're not making active decisions in the story. So, but despite those two things, I was incredibly invested in what was happening, which is a testament to how good the writing is. That was exceptional, exceptionally written. Fascinating characters, incredible art, incredible music. It's just so damn good. And I know even... And I know I messed up a lot, by the way. I don't know how much people noticed, but I... That's kind of awkward for me to read through. Because it required a lot of... Well, it's just... The way the characters talked was very strange. They talked in a way I'm not used to, and it was really awkward to read, so I kept stumbling over stuff. And they kept saying just very strange phrases, and I, I got the impression that at least the boy was supposed to have, like, a southern accent or something with the way he talked. And also, I, I don't really like to say the word I as in A-Y-E. If you noticed, I usually skipped over that and just replaced it or didn't say it. And that's because it sounds... When you say it without an accent other than my normal accent. It just, it sounds stupid when I say it. Like, it sounds really awkward and out of place. So yeah, I stumbled over a bunch of words because they talked very strangely, and... And I didn't do any sort of justice to the accents that I think they were supposed to have, so... Yeah, I kind of messed it up a lot. But despite that, I stumbled on through. Hopefully people still found it interesting nonetheless. I, I know I stumbled a lot, though. I recognize that. But I did the best I could. Is there anything else to say? No, I guess I summed it up. Yeah. That was exceptional. I think I forgot to mention in the beginning, by the way. This is free. So it was free, and I think it was created in 30 days or something like that. So it's free, and it's awesome, and it's good in, like, every way. Great in every way. It looks beautiful. It sounds beautiful, wonderful story, wonderful characters, just damn. I'm blown away. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed me mumbling and stumbling over the dialogue, as I know I did a lot. Hopefully it was still enjoyable despite that. I hope everyone enjoyed, and thanks for coming along with me into the world of Juniper's Knot.